Good morning, everybody. This is Omni Russo. Welcome back to Oxygen. Include a quick and dirty tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about mid game base cooling, which you can see I'm already failing at since exactly when I hit the record button, somebody became scalding. Right now, we're going to be talking about the first method or the most well known method, which is Wheeze Warts. Wheeze Warts were uh, kind of nerfed recently in the game, but they are still usable if you do it right. So over here, I have a little situation built up with some diamond tiles, some insulation, some farm tiles, and this thing, which is the canister emptier. Now the canister emptier, you can put a bunch of hydrogen in it if you have uh, what I showed you earlier here, <clears throat> which is a canister filler. I have mine hooked up to a hydrogen line in a spawn. But right here, we're going to be talking about how exactly to use that. So, the thing about Weezworts is, yes, as you can see on them, the body temperature is more comfortable, negative 60 to 95. They will stop below that. They also need about 4,000 grams of phosphorite per cycle. They consume vacuum, which is... Uh, that's not actually how it works. Basically, they, uh, they, they, they cool down everything around them. You can see that in this little room right here, uh, the hydrogen in this room is 2.9 Celsius. The reason we use hydrogen is, of course, if we can click on it, do all the different things, it has one of the highest thermal conductivities of all the gases. The next comparable ones are, let's see, ethanol, which has a high thermal conductivity of 167, or gasified phosphorus itself however if you don't want to melt it and you can't melt it the best thing to use is of course going to be hydrogen so we're going to get this filled now the reason we use hydrogen and the way that we use hydrogen in this specific build is we want all of the oxygen in this room to be replaced with hydrogen the way you do that is you have a canister emptier here and a way so that the hydrogen that is going to be put into this room we'll just put it at that here is uh, all the hydrogen is going to be replacing the gas by emptying hydrogen in here and it's going to shove it all out of this little bit aside here and the interesting thing about farm tiles is when you actually start planting them they could be planted from below interesting thing there they can also be fertilized from below so once you've filled up your entire room with hydrogen it doesn't really matter how much you want to kind of like over saturate the room with hydrogen because of uh it's you know specific heat capacity it's got a pretty high uh, uh, heat capacity, but you want to be filling it as much as you can. But you saw there, you can plant from below, you can fertilize from below. So when this entire thing is done, you set up something like this where you actually close it off and have, I have a conveyor receptacle with phosphor right here, and they can be, uh, your farmers can constantly be fertilizing it from below. Now you just pump whatever you want into here with radiant gas pipes, like I have hot oxygen coming in. And when it leaves, it's a 3.3C, and then you can bump that anywhere. You can do the exact same thing with water. And that's how you use Wii's wards. Another way you can use these is by naturally planting them, of course, with pips, if you can figure out how the pips work, to get them in a very narrow area. And with that, you won't have to actually fertilize the Wii's wart, which is much more useful. But of course, this that's a lot harder, so I tend to use this one. The next way that we uh can use mid-base cooling is with ice machines ice machines are a little bit difficult to use because when ice machines are working they put out a ridiculous amount of heat they basically literally take all the heat out of the water that you are putting into it and they heat up incredibly fast we should take bikini bottom and push it somewhere else now they can be a little bit self-cooling because you're going to be taking all the ice that's in them dropping it onto the ground like so and then all the ice that's in there is going to be quickly heated up by uh, i've got a little bit of a space here with some radiant liquid pipe made of gold because gold has again a very high thermal conductivity 120 duplicate temperature units and some lead temp shift plates, which have 35 con conductivity. Uh, lead is very plentiful. Other conductivity, uh, high conductivity temp plate shifts, temp shift plates you can use is granite, which is a 3.5, or diamond, like I used down in my little Wheeze Warp plant down here, which has the highest thermal conductivity next to aluminum 
of 80. I don't have any aluminum on this map, so I can't really show you that. Uh, in fact, that's probably going to be nerfed soon. Anyway, I have a little bit of a setup here with some diamond window tile, because diamond window tile is one of these solid tiles with very high thermal conductivity. And then a clock sensor. The reason for the clock sensor is to make sure that when the ice melts, it all goes into one basin. You set an activation time here next to all the doors, where the active duration is set to very, very low, so these stay closed, because when this actually opens... Oops. This one. I love when I mess up in my own videos. So when this actually opens, it will drop all of the ice down by opening the doors. Boom, they drop down into there. It will meet up with the water that's already down in there, which is, again, a higher, very high temperature and will melt. Now, the reason being for this is not to try and cool down this room, even though I have the radiant liquid pipes all over the place. It's actually to cool down another room uh, using a liquid that has high thermal conductivity. Again, thermal conductivity is keen. Uh, king, such as petroleum, if I can click on some petroleum here, which has one of the highest thermal conductivities until you get to uh, liquid coolant, which is 2.0. Now, I'm using mine, the reason it's so hot up there, to cool down all the water that comes out of a cool steam vent, because it comes out as steam, which is, a of course, going to be coming out of here at 110. I can cool down this room a little bit with temp shift plates behind it, I can cool down the water a little bit. It's basically the only thing you can do with heat is move heat from one place to another. That's why insulated tiles are so incredibly important. You can also do certain things like move all of that stuff up into ice biomes. You can see I've melted most of this ice biome, but it's still pretty cool. Move it again using a Weezwort farm or a little Weezwort situation such as this. Too cool down the area, but ice machines I don't think of as reliable, even though a lot of people seem to think that they are very useful. Simply because ice machines, while they do make ice, they have to move that heat somewhere, and they heat up very, very quickly. The next thing we're going to be looking at is hydrogen heat deletion. I mentioned this in my spawn video. Hydrogen goes out, it absorbs all the heat from someplace has a high, very high thermal conductivity. It'll go through a loop, pick up all the heat that it possibly can as it goes through said loop. And then once it goes into a hydrogen machine that is running, that will delete the heat. Again, I covered that in my SPOM video. The next thing we're gonna be looking at is the gas or aqua tuners. Gas and aqua tuners are gonna be your main method. Thermo aqua tuners are gonna be your main method specifically of cooling down your base. Uh, the one reason that they are useful is, A, they can be immersed in something like petroleum for thermal conductivity. Take that heat. That heat will go to a metal tile, preferably made of tungsten. If you can't get tungsten, steel will do as well. Steel actually has less thermal conductivity. Oh, I forgot to replace a the tile there. Uh, thermal conductivity than tungsten. You can see here 60. Do we have any steel on here? Probably somewhere else. You know, let's actually go look over here at my space setup where I've got the exact same setup done. Tungsten, all the way over, will take all of the heat that is coming from your steel aqua tuners. Aqua tuners will delete heat coming in at a rate of 15 DTUs. They will delete 15 degrees Celsius. Go through the aqua tuner. Put it out much cooler. All of that heat, of course, has to go somewhere, so it's going to go out into whatever environment you have it in. Right here, I have diamond temp shift tiles. I have tungsten metal tiles to take all the heat. That will go through steel or tungsten doors. Let's check here. Steel doors have a thermal conductivity of 54 degrees. Whereas, oh, I must have replaced those doors. Uh, it's it's recommended to use wolframite in this situation, but wolframite actually does not have as much thermal conductivity as steel. Wolframite's thermal conductivity is only 15. It was very recently nerfed, of course. Now, how this works. All the heat goes out in the tungsten, gets transferred through the steel doors to another room made of tungsten full of water. Now, the reason this is full of water is to run a steam turbine. Steam turbines are very interesting. So basically, more diamond tiles 
little room that you will fill with water. The heat from the thermo aqua tuner will go into the tungsten, through the steel uh, airlock doors, through the tungsten again, into water, heat up the water, turn it into steam. When the steam is hot enough, you can see it's 125 right there. If we can actually get a little bit higher, any second now, or not, uh, the steam turbine will run. The steam turbine will take 125 degree or higher up to about 200 is about the safe level that you might want the degrees of your steam to be. It will run the steam turbine. The steam turbine will cool it back down to 95 degrees and then pump it right back in. You want it to go right back into this to make sure that your steam stays pressurized. Right here, you put a thermo sensor, which this one is not set. Of course, of course, the one I look at is not set. Just my luck. So basically when it's above uh, about 160, when the steam gets above 160, you want to make sure that the steam will open these doors. That way the steam actually, uh, the, the temperature actually stops moving. The good thing about using petroleum in these areas is it has a very high vaporization point and your steam will, and, and the petroleum will never, ever, ever get to that temperature of uh, 538.9 Celsius. So when this is about 160, which is a good temperature for the steam to go, it will open these doors, like so. When the doors are open, they stop transferring heat. It will stop heating up your steam. The steam, of course, will power your steam turbine. Now, the thing about this, steam turbines, you will not, you will not get all of the power back from your thermo aqua tuners. Thermo aqua tuners take 1,200 watts. Steam turbines at maximum build will only give you 850. We talked about power and how to move that in another video. Of course, by putting it back into your system with large power transformers, powering your thermo aqua tuners with large power transformers, one each because large power transformers only transfer Two kilowatts, it will not handle two thermo aqua tuners. But the way that you can use these, now that I've explained how thermo aqua tuners work, is basically putting them into a cooling loop. You attach this to a liquid pipe thermo sensor and a liquid shut off valve. Now, don't be intimidated. It, it is very intimidating, I understand. But uh, if you want to pause the video right here to see how these work, you can see that the liquid pipe sensor is set to about 20 degrees which is about what you might want. Uh, that's about room temperature in Celsius. It will send on anything to... So basically, if this, this is set to if the temperature is above 20 degrees Celsius, it will send, it, send the petroleum to be cooled. If not, by a priority thing here, it will send it on back into the system. So you can see right here, Get a little bit cold it's getting a little bit hot so it's sending the 20.1 celsius petroleum into the liquid pipe thermal sensor coming out at 6.1 that will be sent into my base where it is cooling down currently here my refinery rooms through the radiant liquid pipes this will go through this will take as much heat as it possibly can before it comes right back up and this is very important into a liquid reservoir. You want a liquid reservoir among these because liquid reservoirs will basically be your overflow tank. And will also any liquid that is in a liquid reservoir will equal out with itself. And then will be sent back into the system. I also have one here running in a glass situation where this will cool down all of the glass in the room that it's in. And this is of course attached to a thermal sensor which is set to 50 degrees. This will try and keep this petroleum very, very cool for whenever glass comes into here. You can use this system on a base. I have this system specifically working on uh, cooling down my steam turbines because they overheat very quickly. You can see right there, this actually got to about, uh, got above 100, uh, 125. So the steam turbine is now working. It's only making 242 watts. Again, you will not gather back all of the energy lost from your thermal aqua tuner, so they want to be powered by something else. But you'll get a little bit of power back. It will also cool down this entire area, making sure the steam, of course, uh, all of this temperature, 
all of this temperature will transfer back and forth, which is why the petroleum will never get too hot. The steam turbine will keep this room at 125 or 95 at the very most. The thing to keep in its cool, of course, is going to be your liquid shutoff valves, which is going to be determining your temperature settings, thanks to the liquid pipe thermal sensor, which is a little bit of automation. That's the most efficient way of doing that, and that is the best way to control the temperature that is going to be in your base. Now, I do need to mention these rooms that are surrounding the metal tiles need to be vacuum. Vacuum does not transfer temperature. These rooms need to be vacuum. In the steam turbine room, you could, of course, have it vacuumed out, and something that uh, vaporizes very quick is useful in this room, such as in this case, ethanol, which has a very, very low vaporization point. If the steam turbine gets too hot, the ethanol will vaporize. Cool down the steam turbine with the radiant liquid pipes that are going through it, and we'll cool down the steam turbine to the point that it will not actually overheat. But the rooms need to be vacuum to make sure that your metal tiles here are only transferring temperature to the doors and other metal tiles. It will not transfer into the vacuum. Vacuum it. Vacuum it. God damn vacuum it. All right. That is mid game to, well, really end game cooling because you can see here I'm using a loop here which goes all the way through my bunker tiles, which goes all the way through my, uh, my regolith destroying area, where I've got uh, this petroleum up here with uh, some drywall behind it to make sure that the uh, petroleum doesn't get lost in the, uh, in the abyss. With some auto sweepers, it will cool down the auto sweepers, it'll cool down the robo miners, next to window tiles made of glass or diamond, if you have a heck of a lot of diamond. And uh, we've got a petroleum pipe through here. I'm using petroleum. You can use crude oil at this, uh, on this as well. I just use petroleum because what I had a bunch of it available thanks to a petroleum boiler. And uh, it will do the same exact thing where it will take all the heat and it will cool down a steam turb. Uh, it will be cooled down by a steam turbine to make sure that the extraordinarily hot regolith, see this one right here, 396.3. It does not overheat everything in this area so mid to late game to end game this is going to be your cooling area uh, you can do different things like this one we've got ethanol and oxygen in a little bit of room here to make sure our large power transformers stay cool uh, we've got the same kind of drywall with a liquid up here this a bunch of liquids kind of got dropped into here just ignore it uh, to make sure that these stay cool enough Etc. Etc. That is Steam Cooling. I am Omni Russell. This has been a op on. <laughs> I cannot talk this morning. Oxygen not include a quick and dirty tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, talk about it, praise it, and I will see you next time. Oh, and really quick, I needed to mention uh, thanks to Utulim from Reddit for the suggestion.